What is up guys? Eric Janicki and I got my boy Blake Course B Course Fit. He is recently Olympia qualified classic Z competitor. He is an absolute legend. So we're gonna be doing a shoulder workout today. We're gonna run you through it, what our like your mentality is behind why we train the way we do. So you're not gonna wanna miss this. Blake, I'll let you introduce yourself, drop your Instagram in there so people can follow you. You set the bar high with the legendary status, <laughs> so I'm not sure about that yet, but we're gonna be going down to the Olympia, 12 weeks, I uh, can't wait to get it done. We're up here in Canada, Pure Muscle and Fitness. This is the place to train when you're up here. And yeah, we're gonna hit a Dell workout, and I can't wait, brother, let's do it. Set it. All right, so we're gonna start with, he was over here already. We're gonna start with some rear delts. Rear delts is a really good way to like start that, any shoulder workout because you wanna drive blood flow and starting with rear delts is a really good way to just like open up that fascia. So we're gonna set up on a reverse fly here and we're gonna go back. I'm gonna hit a like one to two count hold on that squeeze. Slow on that eccentric as always, coming all the way in and try to just get constant tension in that rear delt. And so what you wanna do is kinda of almost like turtle shell over on these. I know posturally, you always kinda of wanna be here on most movements, but with the rear delt, you almost wanna turtle shell over it and squeeze those shoulder blades together. Really focus on that peak contraction, getting a good two to four second hold. Once I get about eight to 10 with those hold reps, what I'm gonna do is fire through some failure reps. hop in for a set. Really good thing about rear delts is it's gonna, when you hit any back shot, if you have some really meaty rear delts, it's just gonna be a really good aesthetic for your frame. So even when you're pulling into that rear double, having really good rear delts aesthetically, this is gonna give you more pop to your physique, more of that 3D look in your back. So you see how he's doing that? He's almost going turtle shell over instead of being upright. If you go upright, you're gonna hit more mid-back rhomboids. We're gonna try to focus this one in that rear delt. So he's kind of turtle shelling over it, getting a big hold on that contraction. There it is. On that last set, we push through some partial reps. I've done that on my chest workout. If you guys saw my last video, we're really focusing on if we get to that ultimate failure point, instead of just quitting on the set, hitting those partials, you'll still really dig into those rear delts, still burning right now. So you don't always have to hit that full rep. If you get that failure point, you can hit some partial reps, still keeping the focus in the muscle we're trying to target. Well, literally never done this one before, but now the rear delts are firing. We're gonna go into pressing movements. It's gonna be more medial and front delt, most presses. With this one, it's a cool Atlantis machine. It's a standing press. Looks like it has multiple grips. You can probably play around and hit different angles. I'm probably gonna start here to hit a true kind of more pressing movement, hit more medial and front delt. So with this, always the emphasis, when I'm doing like a dual press, I like to almost stick my head through the rep at the top of the rep at that peak contraction. Big stretch to the bottom, open up that fascia, drive through and squeeze. Tuck those elbows in, drive through, squeeze. I'm just getting a slight knee bend at the bottom of my rep, getting a little drive, still getting that peak contraction, slow negative. It's actually super nice. 
Plus you can basically position yourself perfectly. A lot of people, they'll go too far through, they'll be here. You wanna make sure when you come down, it's almost very slightly in front of you, then you can dig your head through and push through and get that peak shoulder contraction. Couple sets, just really trying to get good blood flow in the shoulders. Then once we go for our peak sets, that's when I'll probably start kind of counting reps. But at the end of the day, with hypertrophy, you're really trying to seek that contraction, that tempo, that range of motion, and getting as close to that failure point as possible. So not focusing as much on, okay, only I only have one peak set. Like treat every set like it's your last of an exercise and you'll get way more out of the movement. Try to stick your head through at the top of the rep. It's almost like rock back at the bottom and then rock forward. You'll feel that peak contraction so much more. A little back and a little forward through. Yeah, that's perfect. Feel that difference? More range, more of that peak at the top of the rep. Okay, so we're about three working sets. What we decided is we're gonna go to drop set on this Either last one. I decided. <laughs> we're gonna go to drop set on this last one. So instead of trying to push up maybe to four plates, where there's gonna be more risk of obviously something going wrong, especially with it being on balance, standing on these, what we're gonna do is try to get, literally, I'm gonna hit failure on every single plate. So three plates, two plates, one plate, literally just giving it everything we got, gassing it out on this last set here. Oh yeah. Come on. Come on. Shoot. Yeah. Chase one. Come on. Yep. Shoot. Fuck you. Good. Let's go. Double deep breaths, dude. Yes. <sighs> Yes, sir. Okay. Mm. 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 Easy, easy. Mm. Stretch and drop. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Come on, burn it. Mm. Come on. Mm. Come on, Eric. Drive. Mm. Come on, more. And I'm done with the workout. That's it. Oh, already a little taxed, but driving through it. I'm gonna, he's got Olympia coming up. So I'm gonna push him through some raise variants. He might not have done before. They burn, they suck. We're gonna get through it. So I'm gonna have him do, it's basically around the world. Fly variant, he's famous, so he's getting a lot of attention. So hopefully it'll come over here soon. But we're gonna do around the world, fly, uh, basically lateral raise. So we're gonna come, start with the traditional rattle raise movement. We're gonna go all the way over the top, slow on the down, rotate back to neutral on the bottom, come up to over the top. I know, they are. So what we're gonna do is really grab the fuck out of the dumbbell like you're squeezing it. And we're gonna come down, touch the sides here in a traditional lateral movement. So you're gonna have the palms facing the sides. You're gonna start in that movement and then you're just gonna naturally bring it over the top so the palms are facing towards the mirror. Slow on the negative, hammer grip. Start to rotate it down. Touch those sides all the way over the top. It's gonna hit like basically every head other than rear, but you're gonna get a ton of medial, ton of front. And obviously the range of motion on this one is extreme. Essentially 180 degrees. <sighs> 
10 there. Push the butt out. 10 laterals. <sighs> Come on, let's go. That'll suck. So again, pretty exhausting with those around the world raises and burning out traditional rat laterals. These will absolutely toast your delts. So a little more back arch and then push the back. Back, start with the traditional lateral, rotate all the way over. Good. Keep that hammer grip, slow down. And as you come down, you're gonna start to rotate it towards your sides. That's beautiful. There it is. Good, two. Money. Three. Good, four. There you go, brother. Come on, how bad do you want it? Seven. You know, those other Olympians are fucking working their ass off right now. Let's go. Don't speed up that eccentric. It's gonna fucking burn. Slow as you can. Slow. Slow. Yes. Good. Give it a second. Rest on the quads. Rest them on your quads. What you do is push the butt out all the way on the seat, farther, farther, farther. Arch the back here, just like almost two thirds rep laterals, just to there. Two, come on. Three, four, come on. Five, work. Six, we have to come to play games today. Let's go, seven, go. Eight, nine, 10, hell yeah. People, people don't know what they're getting in for when they train with me. It's punishment. But they get to see me do it to myself too, so it's not half, it's half as bad. Thank you. Good call. I don't know if you guys can see it. The shoulder pump is absolutely bananas. Meathead move equipment. <laughs> Alright guys, we're gonna do a standing cable front raise on this incline, basically bench. It's a cool one because it's standing. If you only have a seated one, you can literally use that as well. I just saw this cool standing one, so I want to use this. It we're gonna do so we're gonna go here. We're gonna lie back. Yeah. It's gonna be probably like the most strict front raise you can do because a lot of times people do like a barbell front raise, use a lot of momentum here. Pin those shoulders back. Slight elbow bend. Just above head level. All the way down to the quads. Good one second hold at the top. The good thing about this is you wanna think about vectors of force, right? So with a, with a barbell, the only thing you can utilize is gravity. With a cable machine, you can selectorize where you want that vector force to come from. So here, you see I set it on the bottom position, meaning that even when I get to the top of my rep, that's still pulling the bar basically horizontally. So I'm getting still a ton of tension in my delt. Whereas if it was a barbell, that barbell would be going straight down 
through the floor, then I wouldn't be getting that same tension on that front delt as I am using the cables. <sighs> Uh, uh, let's go four more. Mm, three more. Uh, two more. Let's uh, go. One more. Uh, you saw it too on the bottom of the rep. I was actually rolling those shoulders forward. He saw a good stretch because I was actually getting as much range of motion as possible before starting to that raise. I'd roll it, get a big stretch of the delt before firing through, getting that peak contraction at the top of the rep. As always, good holding that peak contraction, slow negative. I'm gonna take a seat for your set. Yep, perfect grip, slight elbow bend, perfect. Good drive. Nice. Beautiful form. Very good. Nice. I'm gonna help you do some four steps on this set. Here we go. I'm with you. I'm gonna give you about 30%. Push. Ah. Good. I got you. Slow. Two more. Push. Ah. Go, go, go. Ah. You, got, you got the negative. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I got you on the ah. positive. Go. Ah, do Good. more. Yeah. Ah. Push. Up, up, up. Slow as you can. Ah. Slow as you can. Slow. Slower. 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 Fuck yeah. Oh, fuck. That's it. I got to do those more. Yeah. <laughs> I got to do those more. Oh. That was a fucking great set. Cooked me, man. That's good. Yeah. So the reason those are so effective, like I said, guys, think vectors of force. This thing, when we do our front raise, if you're gonna do, if we had done this with barbell and we were gonna go overhead, that barbell is pushing gravity straight down through the floor. We're losing all contraction on the front delt. This is pulling from down and basically pulling horizontally. So we got up here, that peak contraction is just as intense. There's no brakes. There's no brakes. There's zero brakes. So that's the thing with cables, that's why I like to use cables so often, is because they provide that constant tension, that kind of power spectrum is very equal through the whole range of motion of the movement. I mean, Another thing worth noting, is see how we don't wait for our second, third, fourth set of an exercise to start really digging? Like, first set, we're digging, we're getting the most out of every set, every rep, every exercise that we're doing, we're utilizing it to its fullest capacity because we don't have time to be here for four hours only focusing on our peak set for the fifth set. We, we wanna tax it from the very first set to the last. Start getting in that mentality. Huh. Yeah, baby. I will show you guys another cool variant of this. Same thing, front raise with the ropes. Allows for a little bit more kind of rotation in the hands. So you can kind of start them, more palms neutral. And then you kind of can rotate over, almost push the thumbs down. It's gonna hit the muscle just a little differently. Same thing, front, uh, controlled front raises. Mm. Yes. 
Come on now. Drive, drive. Oh. Strong, man. Strong. Yes, good stuff. Oh. Oh. Fuck, dude. But ultimate point here, we did 42 and a half on those, those bar raises. No, it was 25 for those rope raises. I felt almost a bigger burn, bigger contraction on that lighter weight because I was able to be so much more focused. So sometimes, I think the mindset is always like heavier and heavier every single set. Sometimes, especially for adults, what I found to be more effective is almost start heavier and go lighter and lighter as you go. And the pump is just unreal. And the risk of injury gets lower and lower. Because the more you get taxed, the more you're gonna to wanna to start incorporating other things, your lats, your biceps. So if you start going heavier and heavier, you're gonna get even less delts, and you're gonna have even more risk of injury. So a little form cue I told him between sets is to pull the hands out as he raises. Because then he's gonna get not only that front delt, but he's gonna get the benefit of hitting medial and rear delt as well on these. Hell yeah. Another thing you guys will notice with shoulders is that we are mostly raising movements. If you wanna get more rounded, capped delts, it's gonna be a lot more from front raises, lateral raises, different movements, burning out, not necessarily heavy pressing. Good, constant tension, go. Three more, two more, last one, boom. Something like that. It's doing, it's doing the trick. We're gonna hit one more variant on this, even though I know he's pissed off at me right now. We're gonna do basically a modified upright row with the ropes on the same incline. You guys, like I said, you guys can just use a traditional incline bench for these, but the, what's really good about these is that it's completely isolated. So a lot of people you see do front raises or uh, high pulls, like upright rows, they'll use a barbell and they'll hit it like this. This disables that completely. The cool thing about the ropes too, ergonomically with the hands, it allows you, you can do these with handles as well. It allows you to really be specific with how you want to rotate your hands. As opposed to a barbell, which obviously is very rigid. Sorry to do. Good stretch here. Pull high, I might actually go just a tad lighter so I can get the form perfect. So we're gonna be here. Rotate those, those thumbs down and in again. We're gonna pull high. Squeeze, slow on the down. This will be really great for medial and rear delt. And a little bit of traps as well. Really good burn on those. Obviously super isolated. Definitely, oh my God, watch this. It's getting bicep cramps from doing this. See that? Have you seen this bicep cramp I'm getting? I just have a question. Yeah. How many inches are your biceps? <laughs> They're about 21. 21. So the arms are, biceps themselves are not 21, but the arms around here are 21. All right, so we're gonna finish out here, guys, with some cuff laterals. These are cool because you can use like the ones they have for literally like glute kickbacks. Pretty much the same idea. What we're gonna do is get a controlled positive, controlled negative. All the way in. Squeeze. You almost want to raise your hands in almost like a Y, like a YMCA Y. Mm. 
And the cuffs are nice because you don't have to worry about grip at all or your wrist giving out. It's all delts. Good posture here. Mm. You guys can see how much he's connecting with those delts. Okay, some failure reps here, half reps, first partials. Perfect. Paying the dues, man, paying the dues. Really never gets easier. You just have to keep pushing yourself harder and harder. <laughs> I get that question a lot. It's like, does it ever get easier? It's like, yes and no. Like you understand the game a bit better and you understand what works for your body but in the sense of like, to push yourself, even though I'm not using heavier weight, I have to like continue to increase intensity or range of motion or volume to get that same desired outcome. Cause like, as you keep leveling up, yes, you have to keep pushing yourself. So no, it never gets easier, but you become more proficient in movement patterns. You understand your body type better, what works for you ergonomically, um, and what movements obviously are going to produce the greatest results with the lowest amount of risk. So in that way it gets easier, but no. It still sucks every single time. You have to push yourself in your training in order to see results. Yep. Good. Get out of this thing, man. Yeah, right. It's working, team. We did it. We fucking did it. Survived, bro. bro. Yeah. So, why don't you like really quick walk through kind of like how that compared to like how you usually train. Yeah, 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 much different. Yeah. <laughs> like every single movement other than the press, like was a different kind of stimulus for me. So these are kind of good workouts to go through because like you get caught in like a habitual kind of circumstances. You always stick to the same kind of machines. So anytime you get a chance to train with somebody at your level or at someone higher ups level, it's like a good opportunity to learn new movement patterns, push yourself, when I find when you train with somebody else too, like you're gonna get extra reps. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you have the spot there too, and like when you're an experienced trainer, like you know when to step in, you know when to, you know, not. So yeah, completely different kind of training style, but scorch me. I'm gonna, I don't think I can hold my son like when I go over to this. So Sarah's on deck now. So sorry, Sarah, it's on you. Sarah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, he absolutely crushed it. But I think he made some great points there about like obviously yeah. tr switching up your stimuli like using different exercises, things it's like you, people get so like comfortable with like, okay, dumbbell shoulder presses, and I have my favorite machine press, and then I'm gonna do some dumbbell laterals heavy, and then I'm gonna touch some like front delts, and then I'm done. Like really start to challenge yourself, figure out different exercises, different tempos, different range of motion, different angles with your hands even, with raising, upright rowing, using the ropes versus the bar, using a bench to stabilize. All of these things are little, little tweaks to your workout that'll make a tremendous difference in the amount of, obviously, hypertrophy you can drive in the tissue, which is the, ult the ultimate goal when we train, right? So he killed it. Wish this man luck. Go and follow him, B Course Fit, on Instagram. And guys, remember, if you guys are not subscribed to this YouTube channel, please make sure to do so. I'm gonna be dropping so much knowledge, full workouts, top five exercises. So do not wait. Without further ado, I will catch you guys on the next one.